All right, hello and welcome. Uh, kind of winging this intro here. This is the first episode of the tentatively uh, labeled Film Nerd Podcast. I'm your host, Vince, and I've been doing some small scattered movie-related things. Uh, formerly did some YouTube stuff that became a little too time-consuming, so trying to use some more uh, easier, accessible resources and see how a podcast goes. Um, but today, what my plan is going forward with each episode is to invite a guest on, have the guest pick an older film, and then we talk about our newer film. So today, I have a guest with me. Would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? John Horford. I am a, I'm not a, a film expert critic by any means. Which, well, what's your background in film or the extent of your interest in movies? I'm, I'm just a... I'm just a fan. I'm just a fan. I, I enjoy I enjoy watching movies, discussing movies. I'm quite opinionated, so that I, uh, that's a good thing to have when it comes to talking about movies. I would say so. I hope so. We'll no, see. I I am right there with you, man. We'll, we'll know by the end of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the first thing we wanted to talk about was the uh, probably ubiquitously talked about Avengers: Infinity War. John, what'd you think of the movie? The first thing that comes to mind is, I think Thanos is right. Oh, spo- by the way, spoilers. I'm, I'll oh, put yeah. the. All I will the, be put. I will be putting this in the uh, in the box or label, whatever. When I post this, there is multiple spoilers. So go ahead. Yeah, I would say that that's the main thing. That that's the first thing that comes to mind. Thanos, he's right. Uh, in terms of his end goal. In terms of wanting to bring the reason why he wants to bring balance, I, I feel like there's there's like two options, three options. So either everyone can live in harmony and everyone can you know share and make sure that there's there's no people living in poverty and um, you know living living you know in the slums like he was explaining to um, he was explaining to was it to Tony Stark? No, 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 it wasn't Who? Tony Stark. It was uh, what's the what's the girl's name? The, the was it was it one of the guardians? Yeah, it's one of the guardians. It wasn't Mantis or, or not uh, Nebula or was it Gamora? Gamora. Was yes, it? Yeah, explain Gamora. it to Gamora. Yes, That's yes. right. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. like, he was like, he's like, when I went to your, you know, when I went to your planet, like people were hungry. Um, oh you know, man, was, that, and that seems messed up. Yeah, it's sort of messed up. He's like, but now he's like, he's like, but have you been back? He's like, basically, like he's like, everyone's like. It's, see, and I wish thriving. I wish they would have showed that. I almost I kind of wanted to see that, that when it they was actually it, thriving. Yeah, because we don't actually know that it was thriving. He's just, he just saying that. It. Like he could totally be lying. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's <laughs> he's kind of a universal criminal, crazy. Yeah, but you kind of like you were saying. You kind of you kind of understand. That was what I, I think I liked the most about this movie is. To me, he's one of the most compelling villains I think we've seen yet in the yeah. MCU. I loved Killmonger too. I thought Killmonger um, and Thanos were two last two movies were in the MCU were two of the most compelling in terms of you kind of understood what they were doing. Yeah. You maybe don't like what they're doing, but you can kind of be like, okay, I can see why he's doing this. I, I kind of empathize with them. Uh, I hated Killmonger. But <laughs> I, seriously, I hated hated his character. I understood. It. It was like a no. It was a noble ish reason yeah. for why he was doing it, and I and I get it. He wanted to like avenge his dad, and he wanted to. I don't. But in his own well, life. obviously the dad of avenging your dad. That's you know you see that in movies all the time. Yeah. But I kind of liked, I kind of liked the culture aspect, and it went beyond that. But you yeah. didn't. You said that you didn't really like him as much. Dude, I, I could not get it. I couldn't take him seriously. Like, I um, did. I did think Michael B. Jordan, like the way he played him, at times it was kind of like. Almost over the top comical, like to Oakland, exactly. like he was. I know he's trying. Yes. I don't know where Michael B. Jordan's from, but like I felt like there were some scenes in Black Panther where he was kind of. Yeah. It didn't seem kinda, natural. No, like, it didn't seem like it. Yeah, that. like the scene when when they're running back at what the capital. I don't remember the capital in Wakanda yeah. when when they're all coming back and he goes, "What's up." <laughs> he he yells that at them. Horrible, horrible. So, but let's go back to Thanos though. And the other thing that I really liked about Thanos is secretly you kind of don't. It, I didn't. It didn't really hit me till the credits were done. The very last thing you see, and you see it most of the MCU, whoever's movie is so and so will return in whatever movie. And at the end, it's Thanos will return. I don't know about your your theater, but my whole audience like was like oh or like booed or whatever. Yeah. But I like that the movie is basically a movie about Thanos. Yeah. And a lot of the time in the film is spent, you know, developing him as a character and kind of building him up because we hadn't seen anything about him before. And my fear going into the movie 
I mean, this was this was one thing that I was hoping they wouldn't do, and they didn't. Was that he was just going to be like this so evil, comically evil for the sake of being evil villain? You're like, okay, I kill. Let's just kill him. Yeah. But then, like you, like you were saying, you kind of he's kind of right. Yeah. In a messed up, twisted kind he, of way. Yeah. So you, because they built him up, you can understand it. No, for sure, he definitely is right in a way, and he also he has a very like human element to him in, in terms of he's not a like you said he's not just heartless, just killing people. Um, blind and like e- even on his planet when he suggested killing half the population he wanted to do it randomly it wasn't like oh let's just take everyone in the slums and kill them well that's why he kept he kept saying I think it was to Gamora and it was even to Stark was that it was mercy he yeah. kept using that word it's mercy because and like you just said he never had like some you know uh, equation to say this person this person no it was just yeah. snaps a finger and it's yeah. just Every other person in existence yeah. gone. Like, even even <laughs> he could have fallen into that. You know, it not, yeah, that, not, not that's his version. That's an interesting thought. The original, the original, like on his planet, like when he wanted to be completely random, and then he's like, they ended up destroying themselves. And, he's like, and it happens on every planet. And then just to see um, that he actually did really love and <clears> care about Gamora. Because when he was going after the Soul Stone, I love that scene. Dude, that scene that is great. amazing. Like he turns around, you don't expect him, and then he's like crying. I know he turns it's around, like, and like he's gonna kill Gamora, and she's laughing, and she's like, finally, she's like, because there's nothing you love, like, so you can't get it, and and then the the dude, what does Red, he say? Red Skull. What's what's his? He line? says he's he's not. Uh, he because she thought he was crying. Because he's he's screwed and yes. he can never love because he doesn't love anything. That's what Gamora thinks. Yeah. Her perspective is he's upset and crying because he's lost. That's yeah. it. It's done. And he goes, the tears are not for him. Yeah. Something like that. Like he's not crying for himself. Yeah, it's like it's for or you. The t- I think it was the tears are not for him. Yeah. I think that was all he said. Yeah. And then it's like, oh shit. Or the tears kill are. Gamora. Did you say like the, or his tears are for you or something? Or I don't think he. I thought he was even more ambiguous than that when he said it. I yeah. thought it was just like. The tears are not for him. Yeah. But you just instantly knew that it's like, oh crap, it's you, girl. Like, well, I, I had a, I had a feeling when soon as he brought her there that something was going to happen to Gamora, and so that that was another thing. What do you think about the uh, the deaths? What do you, do you think they're permanent? No, I mean, I think the. I think do you think some of them are? I think Gamora is. I think Gamora is dead. I think Vision's dead. I think Loki is dead. Yep. And I think Heimdall is dead. Yeah. But the people who like. Who disappeared? Disappeared. Yeah, the time they, you think the time they'll get the time stone in the yeah. sequel and bring them all back. Yeah. But I think they left the original Avengers alive for a reason, and I think they're all gonna die in the sequel in an attempt to save the new Avengers. Because I was yeah. reading something um, where they were talking about that the writers and everyone who's you know and been involved in the MCU, they're trying to find a way to just leave the door open out after 10 years in for this new set of Avengers, especially with Robert Downey Jr. at the point I've read interviews or seen interviews where he said, I'm at the point where I'm kind of done. And I think it's the same um, for, I think, the, um, Chris Evans, who mm-hmm. plays Steve Rogers. I think he's kind of at the point. Those guys have been doing this for 10 years now, especially Robert Downey Jr. I mean, he was yeah. the very first one. He's, I think, uh, in his 50s. Yeah. So I think they're trying to find a way, at leaving them... The, the original ones is the only ones left I think was very intentional and purposeful for the next one they're going to save the new Avengers plus Ant, I'm sure Ant-Man and the Wasp will show up Hawkeye will show up and then obviously Captain Marvel Captain Marvel yep. yeah but then cool. when I saw that scene at the end it's like well then how you how did you not know that she wasn't one of the ones that was snapped away I wonder if that'll be yeah. talked about in the next one dude that's a great point because you have no clue how do you know it's just, it's just everyone it's, <laughs> it's just really, random it's it's every other person, yeah, yeah. you have it's you have no idea who it can be. Random. Yeah. Do you think? Okay. So this was this was another big thing. Do you think that they could have stopped Thanos if they would have would have just decided not to be selfish bastards and just you mean like Peter Quill <laughs> kill, kill kill Vision right? <laughs> oh, away. that part. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought they were talking about when they, when they almost got his gauntlet no, off and that that, that was the, that was stupid. I, I hate it. It was a character trait though, because in, yeah. in did you see Guardians two? Uh, yeah. Because in Guardians 2, when when Ego, his dad, tells him that he killed his mom, he just goes berserk and starts shooting him and gets all pissed off. So I, fu- I felt like that was in character, yeah. and it was a clever plot device to not end the movie. Because yeah. it does keep with his character, but it was frustrating. Yeah. It was frustrating as hell. <laughs> you're like, oh. And I guess we don't have a movie if they just like, you know, when, uh, then it'd be Tony, over. when uh, Iron Man's like, Tony Stark, he's just like, he's like, dude, he's like, get out of here in the beginning. He's like, leave. 
go. And he's like, no. He's like, I, he's like, I'm not going anywhere. And then he gets captured, and it's like, oh, great. And then, <laughs> and then Vision's like, kill me. And it's just like, So do you think... Well, like you said, though, so you were saying you think had they not been selfish, it's like a good selfish look, because like Scarlet Witch, she doesn't obviously want to kill her love interest. It's like, that'd, that'd be like the worst thing in the world. Yeah, but you know, you, you know the chances of stopping this guy are low. So it's like, why, why even give him a chance? You know, it, it kill, kill three people to save like billions. Yeah, who else? Wasn't there someone? Galore oh, was another one because she knew well, she knew that she was the only one who knew the way. And Tony, Tony Stark, because Doctor Strange saved Tony Stark. Yes. Oh my god. But but the only thing about that is he saw the however twelve million four hundred thousand different ways, yeah. and there's only one. So, so he, people were saying, yeah, he maybe, knew that he had to give it up because in the in the one way that he saw where he, they won, they give him gave the, the stones. I'm wondering yeah. if that's why he did that. that. I mean, that's that's the only thing that makes sense. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, because he vowed before on the ship. He's like, I would never save you for any reason. Yeah. So the only reason I can think of is I don't think he grew feelings all of a sudden. I think no. that he legitimately <laughs> knows this is the way to be in Thanos. Yeah. No, 100%. But like, even Gamora, she knew, like, she's like, okay, if he captures me, kill me. Why not just be like, all right, if you really love me, kill me now? Because I'm the only one who knows the way to the Soul Stone. So if you if you get rid of her, and then she decides to go to the place where he is to try to fight him. She was with him her whole like oh, her whole upbringing. She knows how powerful he is, and she's still like. Oh. You're talking about when they went to nowhere. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's like you know you know that your chances against him are like slim to none, and you still went there, and you knew you were the only one who knew the way to the to the soul stone. And yeah, you're, you're, that setting, yourself up, you're setting yourself up for failure. It's like, another one of those plot devices because otherwise you wouldn't have the rest of the movie. But no, it is fru it's frustrating trying to watch the characters and be like, why are they doing this? Why are they doing yeah. that? But you know what else I loved? I love that after he brought his balance, that it wasn't like he's like, I'm your overlord, like you know. Well, and that's me. that's another element to his character. Like yeah. we were saying before, that Thanos, he's not evil for the sake of evil. Like he has this plan that you can honestly, it's like it's on a universally universal scale but like you can completely understand what he's talking about because he's witnessed it before with his the destruction of his own planet mm -hmm. but in the fact that you could see where he's coming from in terms of seeing his planet being destroyed and then bringing balance to Gamora's planet which like you we were saying I don't we don't know I'm, yeah. I wish we could see it because I'd be curious to see if his plan actually worked yeah. for her planet but then at the end yeah he accomplished what he wanted to accomplish he destroyed half. He destroyed half of the population of the universe simply to try and bring what he calls balance, so that people don't starve to death. And then he's just like, "I'm good." He's Dude, just on a beach, or not a beach. He's like in a cabin like in like the woods, cabin. looking at the lake with the sunset the, or whatever. The humility, like you have all the power in the universe. Like you are basically the creator. He's like, well. I was reading because I don't. I've never read. I don't know about you, but I've never read any of the comics. I've no. just been a fan of the movies, and I've I've read that in the comics. Apparently, he is like half. Not half a celestial like Peter Quill, Peter Quill's dad, but like half a god or the race, the race that he comes from. They're basically like half god, half humanoid or something like yeah. that. I can't remember. And I'm sure someone who would listen to this would comment on it and be like, dude, this, no, it's this and this yeah. and this. But I don't, I don't remember what it was. Yeah, you like, idiots. <laughs> Thanos is this and this and this. I was like, I don't know. I just watch movies because they're, they're yeah. fun. They're great yeah. movies. But... Um, do you think you have any? Do you have any criticisms of the movie? Was there anything that you didn't like about it, or that you would change? What were you, like oh, at the end of the movie? Yes. There's something. Obviously, there's some of the plot points that we've talked about yeah. that kind of bugged you, but yeah, those. And then um, I, I don't remember the name of uh, Peter Dinklage's character. Oh, I don't remember it either. But I yeah. could not take it. You know, a little serious. <laughs> well, in the Game of Thrones guy. Oh yeah, I love Game yeah. of Thrones too. But I'm sure I don't know how your audience reacted. But in my theater, I swear when he turned around, and started talking, everyone was just started laughing. Like yes. it was like an abrupt laughter, and pe people were like saying, "What the hell?" Like yeah. it's Peter Dinklage. Yeah. I remember reading that he had a role in the movie, but I, until I saw him, I completely forgot. Him. I was like, "What a like bizarre role." He's a He's a dwarf, but a giant dwarf on a dying, like, on a dead star. He like a giant baby with a beard. That's what he looked like. I was just like, oh. Yeah, he did. Oh, and then his, the dialogue was just... He, it was very comical, the whole scene, because like, even his delivery and his character in general, you know, so you didn't like it I don't think it's... I was just yeah. like, man, I love this. I, I was like, I'm loving this movie so much, but this is really throwing me off. Like... <laughs> 
<laughs> well, one of my favorite parts in the movie was with him when uh, when Peter Dinklage's character was like, "If you do it, you will die." And then Thor said, um, "Then I guess I will be dead." And then he's like, responds, "That's what dying means," or something <laughs> <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> that was, good, that was hilarious. That the whole, the whole <laughs> audience was cracking up at that. <laughs> that was I, good. I love that yes. scene. Oh my god, that's another thing, man. I. As serious as this movie was, especially obviously the last like 12 minutes or so were like a lot of people have said it all, didn't quite bring me to tears. I've watched a lot of movies that I think are far sadder than a Marvel film, but you know, a lot of people were straight up bawling at the end of the movie and especially the scene with um, Tom Hall and Peter Parker. Yeah. That was really sad. Oh, that was, that but was sad. Um, I was amazed at how well that the Russo brothers, the directors were able to juggle the comedy with the seriousness in this film. Cause I, I don't know about you, but I think it's probably the most serious in terms of the tone of any of the 19 MCU movies. I mean, the only one that would come close to be The Incredible Hulk, and that was a terrible fucking movie. Yeah. That was a terrible movie. Yeah. No. If, you've, if you remember I seeing it, it's bad. Yeah. I rewatched it. It's not good. <laughs> because they, that's what they went for in that one, like totally serious with a couple stupid jokes thrown in. Whereas in this movie, I felt like... The humor, the scenes with humor and like the moments where they were trying to bring levity to the scene or some, you know, um, comic relief, mm -hmm. they didn't ever ruin the scenes because there have been some MCU films. And I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Off the top of my head, Justice League, the new DCEU film, yeah. was a movie that went from, you know, in Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman, was super serious and dark. And then because everyone complained that they weren't like the Marvel movies, they, I don't know if you saw Justice League. It was not good, but they tried. That's why I they tried. Never watched it. Well, they went because the DC is kind of a much darker, more serious universe opposed to Marvel as it is, and at least in the films, and in that one, they tried to like shoehorn in all these jokes, and they just they didn't land. They just were so strange and took away from every serious moment of the movie. But I felt like I don't know how you felt about it, but in this movie, anytime they had jokes, I didn't feel like it ever re really ruined. Any serious moments in the yeah, movie? Not, not that I can think of. Like they, the Russo brothers seem to do a pretty good job of juggling the tones in the movie, especially like I said with one that's been, you've never, I've never, you know, well, none of us have seen a, a Marvel movie this serious, yeah. at least in the MCU. They've been other Marvel movies, but like Logan, but that's not in the MCU yeah, or God, whatever. But I love Logan. That's a good movie too. I love Logan. Maybe we should save that for uh, yeah. do that in another one. Um, how was your? So did you watch it out in Arizona? Because I know you were just. Out yeah. in Arizona, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. So, did you see it in a packed theater? Yeah, all oh, completely packed. How was your your audience? I, like, we saw it here at NCG, and we saw it opening night Thursday night, and it was sold out. And the audience, you always worry sometimes with those sold out showings, but usually on the Thursday night, you get the really dedicated fans, yeah. so you don't get any jerks yeah. who are just you know talking or being rude or whatever. So, like, all of the emotions and reactions were super loud and boisterous throughout like people clapping did you get how was your theater there, in terms there was of that? a good amount of clapping there was a good amount of clapping and, and gasping and um and yeah, what the and, fucks at the end yeah well, <laughs> at, at, the, at the end like a few a few people like stood up and just started clapping and, after like, all the deaths yeah and, and like everyone else was just like dead silent like just dead silent and it's like, there was like one big audible gasp at our theater when the film went black really or no, 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 excuse me, throughout, like, throughout, like, as, as, as like, as Bucky went, and Black Panther went, and Spider-Man went, and then, like, each one, I, there's people behind me going, no, are you kidding me? Yeah. No, no, like, people were, like, out loud freaking out about the ending. Uh, understandably so, I mean. It's, it's a ballsy ending. It really is, I didn't expect it. I mean, no, and, and that was one of my praises for this movie, is, you go into a Marvel movie kind of expecting this formula and you expect them to hit certain beats and talk or and do certain things throughout the narrative. And they did some of those, but for the most part, they did so much that I did not expect at all. And that ending like took the cake in terms of just subverting my expectations and blowing them away. Yeah. Like that when the movie ended, I'm sure myself and you included, I just sat there like stunned. I was like, What? <laughs> I was like, did they really just do that? <laughs> I was almost like I don't know. I, I I love the movie, but I was almost like upset at the end. Oh, a lot of people. I was just like, oh, what the? but they they really do leave it open for them to come back. Like there has to be. Yeah, the sequel. The sequel's done. They've already filmed it. The oh, only oh, really? yeah, they filmed them back to back. Oh, okay. So right now, what I was reading is they have reshoots scheduled for later in the year because I'm sure that's when they could get everyone to come back to do some reshoots. Um, 
but I'm sure they're already, I think they're already in post-production. They just got to redo some su- few scenes and it comes out next May, but it's going to be a... It's going to be even bigger than this one. It's going to be such a long wait, man. Yeah. A whole year that we got to wait. But only a year. Done. That's not that bad. For like movies typically, typically yeah. for like a couple years. That's before. true. Well, it's because they filmed them back to yeah, back. Yeah, that's exactly. the only reason they can get out so quickly. I mean, that was, you know, any sequels where they do that. Otherwise, like you said... Like a good example would be the new Planet of the Apes movies. I yeah. think there was two or three years in between each one of those. Yeah. So yeah. that's I yeah, guess. Well, those two. Oh yeah, I know we. Uh, you were in the theater when we went and saw the new one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but anything else you want to talk about with Avengers? No, I think we. I think we hit all the points. I just. I don't know. I. I, I can't. Overall, what would you? How would you rate the movie? What do you think? What's your overall feeling? Like rate it on a on a scale on a John Horford scale, on whatever you want it to be. It, it's definitely it's definitely my favorite uh, Marvel. Movie. Is there, that was another thing I didn't get to ask you. Have you have you seen all the Marvel movies? Yeah. So yeah. this one ranks as your favorite. Oh yeah, this is number one. Like people are like, oh, Black Panther was better. Black Panther was Black Panther was not better than this. I it's, think Black Panther was good, but could have been better. Dude, I didn't I didn't think it was as good as people hyped it up to be. You know, like. I, I think they that was another one where they did some things that were new, but then there was a lot of things in there that I felt like just hit the formula on the head. Hit, they just kept doing the same old thing. But they threw in some new things that I liked that we hadn't seen before in a Marvel movie. But I wish they would have done more with it. But my favorite, my favorite, and it always disappoints me because no one, no one seems to appreciate is Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Really? Is my favorite Marvel movie. That's really your favorite? That's my favorite. Then Infinity War. It's close. Like... I wanted to put it above my favorite before this. My two favorite were the two Guardians movies, and two originally two was behind one. But I, when I rewatched it recently, I liked it even more. I put it above one. I'm gonna have to go rewatch that because two, two's on Netflix right now. It is. That's how I rewatched yeah. it. But the thing I liked the most about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two is I loved the first one. I thought it was such a left field blockbuster. Just James Gunn who wrote and directed just took it down his own path, completely different from anything we'd seen in the Marvel Universe. And then he set all these characters up, and you know, he didn't know a whole lot about them in the first one. It was just kind of a zany, uh, goofy blockbuster in the MCU with a great soundtrack. And then the second one, it's so much slower. The pace is very slow, and he takes time. He even he builds up all the characters, even uh, Drax. He even spends some time building up Drax, giving him his character some emotion to his story with his daughter and his wife. They even give Rocket. And there's some scenes in that where Rocket, you you find out about his background when he's with um when he's with um uh, what's uh Michael Rooker's character, the blue guy. Uh no. yeah, does it start with a Y? I have no clue. Oh I man, I can't think of his name. But Michael Rooker's character who raised Peter Quill, there's a scene when they're when they're yelling at each other and they end up finding out that they're so much alike. And that's what I, I loved how that movie was just a character, it was just um, character development. They just built up all those those characters in the Guardians of the Galaxy. And then the end, I don't know if you remember the end of the movie, to me was just there was so much weight, so much emotional weight because he spent, James Gunn spent the whole film building all those characters up. And like there were some great action sequences, but for the most part that wasn't the focus of the movie. And I think that's what pissed a lot of people off about it. And so there's a lot of people I think who appreciate it for the things I'm saying, but there's a lot of people who are like, Oh, this is nothing like the first one. There's there's not enough action. It's boring. It's not as funny. I don't know. I, I appreciate I'm what James Gunn... Yeah, man. I have to go back and rewatch it. Rewatch that. it. I really like it. I, I liked what he did with it. I'm excited to see because they already have uh, Volume 3 scheduled uh, for... Scheduled or filmed? Scheduled. Okay. I think it's being written right now. Gotcha. It's either supposed to come out late next year or 2020. I think they were leaning more towards 2020. Yeah. But I'm excited to see what he does with so the third So is that your favorite comic book movie comic book movie no my favorite mcu film my favorite comic book movie i always want to include the dark knight trilogy as one i just want to say all three uh, but if i and i really like spider-man 2 mm-hmm. oh, dude, the, Spider-Man too. the Ra- sam raimi one with toby mcguire i love doc spider-man ock. 2 yeah with doc ock dude i love that one. spider i think uh, for me above guardians i'd have spider-man 2 and dark knight and I really like Dark Knight Rises. And then I love the uh, Batman Returns from the 90s that Tim Burton did. Yeah. With uh, Dan DeVito as the Penguin. Yeah. Always love yeah. that. No, I, those are good. The, 
Dark Knight is definitely up there for me. Um, I love Dark Knight. I actually, I'm one of the people who actually thinks Dark Knight Rises is better than Dark Knight. Nice, dude. I, I don't see, I wouldn't probably say it's better. I understand all the problems people have with it because everyone, everyone always complains about all, you know, they say there's always plot holes, like how did Batman get back to Gotham City? That's a great, and they, those are great questions. Like, but does it matter? He's Batman. That's, I don't know. It kind of matters because here's the thing, like he ejected from the, from the plane or whatever it was. And it, it went off like five seconds later, like it, it was a yeah like it's a nuke basically like you're you're not surviving that. That's I know that's another <laughs> complaint that they had a complaint with that and then everyone was upset about how did he recover from having a broken back so quickly. Oh yeah, that was, that was another one. Yeah. See, and those issues didn't you know I'd have to rewatch because I haven't seen it in a while, but I just remember when that movie ended, it was. It was kind of like this movie. I was just like, wow. A different wow. Like, this one was like a wow. Oh, my God. That one was like a wow. That was a great movie. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. It. I love Bane. We should, we should do another episode where we talk about the Dark Knight trilogy. Oh, 100%. All right. You want to try and move on here? I know it's yeah. it's hard because you all good with Avengers? I, I'm good with Avengers. Any other points? No, I, I loved it, man. It was, it was good. So, John, for this week, picked the classic film we're going to talk about. My hope is going forward this with each episode to have the guest pick a classic film either that we have seen or have not. The one John picked, neither of us had seen, and I was really excited. He picked the 1922 silent film, Nosferatu. John, why did you pick that movie? In all honesty, the reason I picked Nosferatu is, one, just because the, the Count Orlock character, he just looks so... He always looks so strange, you know, and he just, he stood out and it's just like, it was almost like, he, he looks like eerie, creepy. It's like, what the hell? And then, uh, yeah. That, and, then, <laughs> and, then, and then the episode of Spongebob. It's like, oh my God, dude. Like I was two. thinking about that on the way over here about, because I was thinking about what we we're going to talk about this. And one of the things I was going to ask you is what was your first recollection of being aware of the film or the character Nosferatu? And my oldest memory of the word or the character was that the hash slinging slash hash, episode of Spongebob. Yes. That's it's a throwaway joke, and when you're like, because I saw it when I was a kid, like elementary school or middle school, it's like two. So for SpongeBob, that was what? That's like two thousand. I was, two, I was yeah. like nine or ten, yes. probably the first time I saw it. I remember thinking, what? What is that? It makes no and for sense. well, and for years as a little kid, for years I was just like, it's got to be some adult joke. And then as I got a little bit older, I think in middle school or high school, I remember googling it. I like looked it up. I'm like, oh, that's what this is. Uh, I still have never gone back and looked into the reason why they did that in SpongeBob. But that, for you yeah. too, that was the longest going back that you can yes. think of hearing Literally, about those factors. That was it. And I actually, I looked it up at the time and saw that it was a movie. And then I was just like, oh, it's a silent movie. And I was a kid and I was yeah, like, yeah. silent like, movie. Ah, it's like dumb. Silent I'm not going to do that. But it's just like at the end, it's like, wait, if you weren't turning the lights on and off, like, who was? And then it's like, no, <laughs> no it's like, dude. Yeah, no, well, and that's an actual, because I, I was, as I was watching the movie last night, I was consciously trying to figure out which scene that was from that yeah. they spliced that out of. Yeah. And it's it's uh, near the end of the movie when, or not, I don't think it's quite near the end. It's when he comes into Tom, um, Thomas Hutter's chambers, right, when he's hiding under his bed. Mm -hmm. It's like right when he comes through the door. Yeah. I think it was that scene where they take it from and they stand in the doorways. They must have animated the light switch in there or yeah. something. <laughs> um, but so what did you think of the movie overall? I know I know you were coming in because when I when I just came into John's house, he was uh, he was starting to tell me that he he wasn't what he expected. So I want to hear what he has to say about it. It was not what I expected just because I honestly I, I thought it was going to be a little bit um, scarier than it was. And it was almost like it was almost comical, a little bit at times, just because of how animated they have to be because they're not speaking. That was another thing I was going to bring up. Right, right. they were so animated mm -hmm. that it almost came off as like. Had you seen? Have you seen any other silent films before? Or was this your first silent film? No, you no, I um, I've seen uh, what's that? What's that silent film? It might even be older than this one. Birth of a Nation. Oh, you have that's on Amazon Prime, or at least yeah. it was at one point. Yeah, I in really college, to, in college, I really I took wanted a, to watch it. I took a film class. Did course. you really? Yeah, Man, yeah, I always wish I could have done that. Yeah, yeah. In college, I took a film class in the summer, and uh, and we watched that, and uh, yeah. So it it was uh, I don't know <laughs> the I, most overtly I, racist I, film in in cinema history. Oh, Birth of a Nation. I know. Yeah, I, I've well for my for Christmas this year, my mother in law bought me the 2016 edition of A Thousand One Movies You Must See Before You Die. So mm -hmm. I was reading through it, and I've read a little bit about Birth of a Nation. I want to watch it, 
you know, for because it's everyone's split on it 50 50 because obviously it's an it's a detestable movie it's horrible in its content and what they're doing in it but there's so many groundbreaking things from a cinematic standpoint that um what's that guy's name the director uh uh dw griffith yeah, I think it's D.W. Right. Griffith. He's right. He did so many groundbreaking and new things in cinema when he made that movie. It just sucks that what he chose to do him with is is just an awful, <laughs> awful movie. <laughs> so I've always wanted to watch it for that reason. It's literally claim propaganda. Like, people in blackface. Like, oh, I know, yeah. Getting, getting rescued by the clan. They're the heroes. Like, you know. Yeah, because at the time, I think it was, there was like a, a decline in interest in the clan, I yeah. think, or something like that, and it was used as like a, like you said, propaganda to, to like raise interest in yeah, it again. And it worked. Had you watched other than that? Had you watched any other silent films? Um, no. Is the original King Kong a silent film? It's a either a '30s or '40s movie. It, I don't think it is. Yeah, if it's I'd that, have to look it up. That's the only one I was, I was like, was that a silent? I know I haven't this. seen that one. The old, so the only other silent film I've seen, I've seen two other feature length silent films, which was why I was really excited you recommended this. I um, this past winter I watched Charlie Chaplin's The Kid, mm -hmm. which absolutely blew me away. I didn't think a a silent film could almost bring me to tears. Like oh, Charlie really? Chap, oh Charlie Chaplin watching is a genius. Yeah. And then there was another one because I bought this. Um, it was like a six film silent film pack. I got it really cheap. And it was another one of his less well-known films that wasn't... I even read online people at the time. I was like, eh. And I watched that one. It was it was okay. It wasn't very good. Um, but then this. That's why I was so glad that you recommended it. Because it was one that was on my list. Yeah. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it. So did you like... Even though... So it's supposed to be a horror movie, obviously. And for anyone who doesn't know that's listening, Nosferatu was an illegal adapt, screen adaptation of Dracula. Bram Stoker's Dracula. It actually almost was completely lost to history. I was reading that every copy that Bram Stoker's widow um, filed a lawsuit against um, F.W. Murnau, who made the film, and she won. And every copy of the film as part of the lawsuit was burned, except for a copy that was distributed around the world that she yeah, never got her hands on. Cool. So it, it kept, yeah, was kept alive. I was reading that article. Yeah, it was so. kept alive. Um, and then it's been remastered as recently as I think it was the copy. I, I ordered it on Amazon on Blu-ray from Kino Classics, and they remastered it, I think, six or seven years ago. So There's The one I watched, um, I got it on the Google Play Store. It was remastered in 2016. And, and Did it like, say Kino Classics when I, you were watching it? I don't game? remember. I mean, we could literally pull it up if we really wanted to look, but um, I, I don't know. And then I was also reading that, like, because it's a silent film, um, the original soundtrack for this... Uh, for this movie was lost. Like no one knows what the original music that goes yeah. with the movie is, and I that's what I was really reading. Interesting too. Well, well, what I saw was the original score was scored like a couple years before the film came out. Because what they used to do with silent films is they used to, after the film was done, it was made, then they would screen the film in front of an orchestra and the, and the conductor, and they would compose and make the move music as they're watching the movie. That's, that's what they used to do. Oh, yeah, they awesome. made it after the film was completely done, yeah. and then they just added it. And a lot of times, from what I've read before in silent films, they wouldn't even have audio. It was just the live orchestra was playing the music while you're watching the movie, like in a pit. Oh. Yeah, from what I've seen and read. Um, but yeah, I did read that as well, that the original composition was lost, but it was redone like right away. Yeah. It was like What Remains was like the next year or two. So it is a pretty... From what I read, it was a pretty Higher. old. Um, the The composition was from a long time ago, but not yeah. the original. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Did you like the music? Yeah, no, I thought, I thought it was really that good. That was one of my favorite parts. Yeah. The movie, the music. Yeah. See, and like you said, I also didn't think it was scary. And the, part of that is I think we're desensitized now. You know, we see things like Paranormal Activity and Insidious and Sinister and uh, The Conjuring. These movies that are genuinely, you know would probably kill people in the 1920s if they saw them. They'd probably have a heart attack in the theater watching the scary stuff we do now. But so in the traditional sense, I agree. I don't think it was scary. But I thought it was creepy and unnerving at times, especially because you brought up the way he looks. Yeah. There was like the scene when they're in the boat 
when he's coming over to uh, what's um, Hutter's town, Hosburg, yeah. I think it was Hosburg, and he's in the hull of the boat, and the uh, one of the first mate goes down to see what what's in the coffins, and the coffin opens, and he ra- that scene like genuinely gave me chills, like wow, that's so creepy. Yeah. He raises up out of the coffin, yeah, so he's just like looking at him, and then but the and then like the top of the coffin just like they use like the stop motion to like it like flies oh yeah off right so nothing touches it uh-huh. it just like flies so it looks like i mean for that time you'd like it's, lose your mind oh i bet like, what how oh, i bet that, how did that happen that's what i'm like, saying and see that's why that's how i think you have to watch these silent films and so these really old movies is you kind of got to watch them in a vacuum because i don't think i think if you try to watch them they got a burp. Excuse me. You got to watch. I feel like if you try to watch them and compare them to things like what we're just talking about, the Avengers, then you're going to be disappointed. You know what I mean? You can't compare it to the things you're going to the cinema now and watching. You got to watch it in a vacuum and try and and try and see what they had available to them at that time. And I think you can appreciate it more. Did you like it overall? No, I liked it a lot. The one thing that bothered me about it, one of the main things that bothered me about it, were the like the text. Right, that pops up on the screen. We, I think I think we have a lot as we're talking about these movies, man. I think we think a lot alike because yeah. I literally have it written on my notes right here. Yeah. Negative inner titles. <laughs> Dude, I was just like, oh, and it stayed up for so long. That I know that like, it kind of it was to the point where it took you out of the movie. Yeah. Like it was like you were aware, like okay, can we come on go? And I wonder, but see, and I wonder if that was with the remaster. Because the title, because it's a German film, yeah. so the inner titles were originally German. Yeah. So I don't know when they remastered this movie, um, what they did necessarily with the inner titles for the English inner titles. If if they changed the length of them, if they had to redo them completely, because I don't know about the version you watched, but when I was watching, I felt like the text was very clear and crisp. I mean, I got it on Blu-ray, and I know it was remastered, or whatever, but. It just looked too good for the original time. So I'd be curious to know 100%. if that length of time they used for the inner titles. Um, so in those of you who don't know, if you have if you don't know what an inner title is, so you have subtitles in films, then in silent films they use inner titles. Subtitles are when you're watching a scene happen and they put script at the bottom so you can know what the people are saying. Inner titles were used with silent films in between scenes. So like they'd stop a scene and go black and they'd bring up text on the screen and that was in it was called an inner title because they were just word cards in between the screen so you knew what they were saying scene to scene and we John and I both felt that in Nosferatu they were kind of kept on screen way too long because <laughs> like, I a some for dude like 20 words <laughs> several of them I would read twice like I just read it and I was like okay I'll just read it again <laughs> I swear I did the same thing except I was like how many times can I read this before it disappears I read it like seven times I know like it, they're up there for so long and I was just thinking in my head like and I was reading them slow too that's what I was trying I know and, and I was like thing. but then I was thinking like for the time why would it be that way and then if you think about it a lot of people couldn't read back then I feel that like you know what true. I mean like I know people who were I know people who were born like my great, I know people who are like my grandparents' friends, or a little bit older than my grandparents, who literally were illiterate. Like they could not read. So maybe if you See, have but, to like read but then, to somebody next to you, or that's like, true. But then at the same time, I felt like wasn't it like a hundred years ago? Like going to the movies was mm, like when it first when the movies was first the thing. Like it was. I don't want to say for upper higher class, class upper class, because yeah. you know I've you know you see. You know, you see movies in the 50s where they're going to movies and, you know, anyone can go because they have cheap movies. But I feel like over 100 years ago when they first came out that maybe it wasn't for everyone. But I don't know. I feel like that's something I would have to look up. But that is a good point. I wonder if that's I just, why. I was thinking of reasons. I was like, because, like, it for somebody with, like, adequate, like, an adequate reading level, like, in today's Like day us, age, you can read it twice like, or three times. Dude, you can read it so many times. It's up there forever. And it's just like, okay. <laughs> You're like okay. well and that's the and see and that's that's always something I look for in a movie and it's hard it's hard to criticize this movie for that but I look for if there's something that brings me out of the movie because when I watch a movie I like to th- I like to forget everything I like to just be engrossed in it but then the second some there's something that makes me self aware I'm watching a movie it takes me out to me it's a criticism mm-hmm. like to me that's you're you're jarring the audience and you're ruining their experience and that was it just because I kept going okay. 
Come on, like, let's get going. <laughs> I literally started using them as like tech, like check my phone real quick breaks. So I'd read it and I'd be like, I know it's gonna. After the, like the first two, I was like, all right, it's gonna be up there for like another minute. I was like, let me check look, my phone. Let, real me, quick. let me go and see like, what's going on. Dude. Well, and I felt like because the movie's not very long; it's only I think an hour thirty-five, and I feel like those inner titles probably they might add a good half an hour. It's a long time. At least uh, thirty minutes to the whole runtime of the film, yeah. and. And that so, and then one of my other what in addition to that, one of my other biggest criticisms of the film was the ending. And I, I went through and reread the plot because the ending to me just felt, felt so abrupt. Like I understood what happened, but it just seemed like boom, 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 it's done. Yeah. And I feel like maybe if they took away some of the length used for the inner tiles, maybe they could have added a little bit more of the narrative and like like fleshed the ending out a little bit more. Like so, the movie ends. Oh, and spoilers for Nosferatu. <laughs> the movie ends with so the main character Thomas Hutter. His wife is, find, reads this book that he's been he reads throughout the film about Nosferatu and about vampires, and she reads that the only way to lure a vampire away is like if a virgin um, lures him in or something like that. And he Nosferatu comes over and starts drinking her blood, and she becomes so distracted and so engrossed in her neck, which she comments on earlier in the movie how a bunch of, how beautiful he she's does. got a beautiful neck, which I is so I know I laughed too. I was like, that's so creepy. Yeah, it's like Nosferatu goes, she your wife has such a beautiful neck like, early in the movie. Neck, yeah, what a love I think that's what yeah. love your wife has a lovely neck. <laughs> it's like what? Well, he, you see what I mean? Like it almost <laughs> seems like a comedy, like I know. Well the other scene that almost made me oh so let me finish. So then he he's so busy sucking the blood from her neck that the sun comes up and kills him. And then that's the end of the movie, and then they're saved in the town, and that's it. And I was like, oh, come on, like I don't know. I guess, and I guess maybe at the time, that kind of an ending wouldn't wouldn't have it would have been fine. But I feel like we're so used to now seeing, I don't know, in horror movies, especially like with monsters, like some sort of an epic standoff or a battle, which was something I do appreciate about this movie that it was much more subtle as a silent film, you know. It's not all about Nosferatu. It's more, I think, about his presence and the you know the impending doom and the disturbing feeling that he creates more so than him just coming out. Because they never show him killing anybody. Because the, the whole movie, the town... So Nosferatu is just like Dracula. He comes from Transylvania. And then he comes to this town where Thomas Hutter, the main character... Um, is a salesman and lives with his wife. He sells. He's a realtor. He sells houses. And his original task was to go sell a house to Nosferatu. He wanted to buy a house in the town. Um, and so Nosferatu ends up following him to the town. And the, all these people start dying when he gets there. And they contribute to the plague. They say it's it's the plague that's killing everyone. But they note that there's like marks on their neck. And they think it's part of the plague. So obviously Nosferatu's drinking everyone's blood. He's sucking their blood and killing them. But they never show it. The only one, I think the only one they show in the film is his wife. I'm pretty sure at the end. Yeah. I don't think they ever show him sucking anyone's blood other than at the end of the movie. Uh, oh yeah, they didn't show Hutter. Because no, he, he wakes up and he up. has the two dots on his neck and he writes the letter to his wife and he's like, and two mosquitoes bit me on the neck. <laughs> side, by side. side by side. It was like, like I know, that was the other part that kind of made me laugh. <laughs> the other, well, what I was going to say a moment ago, the other thing that kind of felt comical to me is when Nosferatu, when they dock, he docks ship at Hossberg from Transylvania and he goes to get off the boat and he's carrying his coffin with him around town. He's like running around and he's like trying to, he's locating the house that he had just bought, which is across the street from Thomas Hunter and his wife. And it just, it just looked to me so comical because he's just running around with this coffin. Did, what, did you notice that he walks through Hunter's yard? Yeah, but it's at night. Yeah, dude. Okay, that was another thing. I couldn't always tell when it was night. See, I thought it was clever. It was when the, and I, I'm curious, I'm assuming it was done at the time the film was made. But if you haven't seen Nosferatu, hopefully you have if you listen to this. But what F.W. Murnau, the director, he, what he does to signify to you, because it's a black and white film, in order to help you see that it's light out and dark, the light scenes, whether it's artificial light from a candle or um, whether it's actual light from the sun outside, is like bright gold. Like the whole scene is doused in this kind of gold. And then if it's dark, it's like a blue, like a yeah. kind of like a purple blue. So that's how you know when it's light and it's dark. And you can tell... I, it's pretty obvious, I think, that they filmed the scene when it was light outside, yes, yes. and then they add this blue yes. to make it seem like to you that it's it's nighttime. And you also know it's nighttime because they're all in their pajamas when they show them when they show Hutter and his wife. 
So and then it's blue out, and you're like, oh, it's and at night. He's in his pajamas in that scene where they finally, when they first meet each other, and he, he goes out and like greets him, and he's wearing like the hat. Like, at the which part? Uh, Nosferatu is. Oh, like, um, he's like, he's like all the servants are asleep. He's like, it's like, oh yeah, 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 because he shows up at nighttime. Yeah, and he's like, it's almost exactly. midnight. And, yeah, 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 and he shows. Exactly. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back to that, real quick on the end part though. Like, I, I feel like for the time that might have been like, like groundbreaking. Like, because when he disappears, like that effect. Like, he just, he just poof. Like, and, and then they, there's like the smoke. They had a yeah. smoke effect that yeah. came up from the floor. It was yeah. kind of cool. And, and you know, I, I went because I, I looked up after I read the film. I looked up an article and it was talking about like so in um in Bram in Bram Stoker or Stoker's uh, Dracula, he um wait, what was I gonna say? He um oh yeah, he mentions that vampires are weakened by the sun, but not actually killed. So this is actually so like in all vampire films now. Um, vampires are killed, you know, by sunlight, basically, you know, and that actually didn't even exist until Nosferatu, because I, in the book, it's just like a weakening thing. Well, I, you know, I read a little thing, it said differences between the novel and the film, and that yeah. was one thing that I read yeah. as well last night, was that originally, they did, the vampire, Dracula didn't die from the sunlight, yeah. it was just weakened. Yeah. So yeah, I think that was something that maybe was groundbreaking then, so that's, yeah. that's a good point, I didn't think about that. I mean, I don't have a problem with how he died, I just felt the lead up to it was just so quick and then it was like the yeah. end was on the screen yes. I just wish there just would, I just wish there would just been a little bit I more I did not think the end was coming that soon like, I know that's what that's I, what I'm saying it was I so saw, abrupt yeah I looked at the time and I was just like I was like there's only a couple minutes left and then all of a sudden like, boom <laughs> <at> the end. <laughs> I was like God, that's it <laughs> but I, I mean over, overall I really liked the movie I, and like I said when I watched these movies I felt the same way when I watched The Kid which is a silent film I would highly recommend if you get a chance. Yeah. And if you want, I have it. You can borrow it. Oh, so, cool. But The Kid is one that I was trying to watch it in a vacuum and I was doing the same thing with this, trying to imagine in that time what they had available to them and trying to be an audience member. And I, I loved it. I thought it was a great movie. I wouldn't say it's like one of my all-time favorite horror films or anything like that, but it's something I would recommend to people, more discerning film goers, because obviously... Um, the average person would watch him go, this is stupid. Yeah. Or they'd probably laugh at it. Like, this yeah. is dumb. And they'd think, this isn't scary. And there were some parts that, that were kind of funny. And like we yeah. both said, we, we both laughed at it at times. But, I mean, the the level, the talent of the actors, like, to be so... Like, and that was really something I'm glad you brought up. Yeah, that I was, was something really I'm glad you mentioned. Because they, seriously, mm-hmm. they, they were so animated and... You ha- and they had to be. And they had to be, but they, they did a really good job. Like I'm like, it's it's silent. Like there's nothing and you're just watching it and you know how the story's going too. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like you're able to follow along. Yeah. Like that takes skill. Yeah. Like it's it's amazing, really. I mean, and they have the other thing that they're so they're exaggerated obviously with their body. Yeah. But if you've never seen a silent film before, um, it's with their face too. They make all these sometimes comical facial expressions with their eyebrows and their eyes and their mouth, yes. like to really convey what's happening because they have, like yeah. you said, like, they can't say anything. So, like when Hutter's going to um, meet Count Orlock, um, Nosferatu, mm-hmm. and he's in the pub or the whatever it was. Yeah. And he mentions, he's like laughing, like, eating. yeah. Then he mentions that he's like going there and everyone's face, like, you know what I mean? They're just like, well, the camera, I love, I love that scene because I loved how obviously it's silent. So they have, he's got to find a way to show the shock. And obviously there's the music. Mm-hmm. The music. And that's one of my favorite parts about the movies. The music does a good job of kind of conveying the the ambiance, the feeling, and the emotion of the film. But the the emotion in that pub scene of they stop the camera and they frame several different sections of people, and they all he he puts the camera on them when they're in the middle of doing something like he has just said it, like Hunter just said that he's going to go see Count Orlock, and they immediately stop and like ex- exaggerated turn, look at the camera, and just like look of shock. And he does that with like three different shots in the bar and it really really shows you like the gravity of the situation like oh he's going to go see Count Orlock yes. like they shouldn't do that yeah, but like, I know that like you're going to die you're going to die <laughs> or your wife will end up dying and I thought, the other thing I thought was like kind of hilarious like I was not expecting him to be like a realtor like, you know, well that's like, I, have you ever read Dracula no I have yeah. I bought the book years ago it's something yeah. I've always wanted to read I have it sitting I think on my nightstand with my pile of books Never read. Always wanted to, and I wonder because I've read that it's pretty faithful. They changed the name of some of the characters, and they left out some of the characters. 
they had to change the name because they yeah. they had no permission to make this adaptation. <laughs> they did it illegally. Um, but I'd be curious to know if that's in the book. Uh, it, it was just a strange thing, I guess, because I just I just. I, I don't know, I just wasn't expecting it. Yeah, so if, if you're listening you haven't seen Nosferatu, the main character, Thomas Hutter, he's a realtor, he works for uh, his boss, Nuck, which is Nuck or Knock? Was it Knock? It, it was Knock. Knock, what a bizarre name, but his, his boss is Knock, and they are asked to from Kyle Orlock, who's Nosferatu, to buy a film in their, or a film, to buy a house in their in their town, and he sends Knock, sends Thomas Hutter out to Transylvania to buy it. But yeah, I think it is kind of strange that they're that that's how he meets. It yeah. just seems like such a such a like what's the word I'm looking for? Just normal, random it does. way to and meet. And for the time, like I don't know why I just wasn't expecting that. Like I, I just I was expecting him to be just like a, a traveler who got lost. And who happened upon this castle and yeah. or something like that versus like, oh. I'm Do you think you would have preferred that? Do you think that would have been better? No. No, I, I mean, I think it was fine. I, I think some of the parts that were, another part that was kind of funny to me, like we were talking about the, when he's selling them the house, he's trying to sell them the house. Like, he knows that, like, the house isn't that great. Like, uh, mm-hmm. Nosferatu, Count Orlok. Yeah, it's a dump. And so, yeah, that. in the movie, the house, the house that Count Orlok wants to buy is across the street from Thomas Hutter. It's a huge mansion, but it's a dump. Like, yeah. all the windows are knocked down. Yeah. It looks like crap. Yeah, but yeah go exactly. ahead. Exactly. And then, like, he doesn't want it, basically. Like, he's not really showing that much interest in it. And then, like, uh, the locket falls out. Uh, yeah. And he sees the wife, and he's like, <laughs> Oh, my. He's like, Your wife has a lovely neck. He's That's like, a good point. Yeah. And then he's like, I didn't even think about yeah, that. Yeah. And then he's like, I'll take the house. And it's like, Dude, that didn't, like, raise any, like, no You're red right. Flag. Like, I didn't even, I didn't catch that. So, you're right. He bought the house because of Thomas Hutter's wife. Yeah. Because the locket fell. And he yes. saw Because he was just kind of meandering yeah. with the contract and just, eh, whatever. Then he saw it, and he was like, his it's eyes sold. Lit yeah, up. sold. What he said? What a lovely neck. He said, "What a lovely <laughs> neck." And he's like, "He's like, I'll take your." And he said, "Like, he said, like, abandoned house or ruined house or something." Like, it wasn't like. I'll and take he the and house. he says across the street because yeah. it's across. <laughs> yeah, he knows it's, it's across, across, the across the street from him from him and his yes. wife because he wants it because his wife is there. Yes. Oh my god, yeah, and so and that's you know that's just one of those things I feel like we've watched these old movies that. At the time, I'm sure people were in shock, they were in awe, and it's it's hard for us now, all the movies that are available, all the movies that we've seen that are, you know, with how advanced the technology is and how great the storytelling is, to not laugh at some of those cheesy things that at the time probably weren't cliche or tropes yeah. because it's 1922 and only two decades of movies have happened and... So they're all crazy. silent films. It's crazy to think about. I know, it's, it's hard to imagine its, it. It's still in its infancy. Like, you know, it's like we're laughing like, oh, you guys couldn't do better than that. And it's like, they were they were creating the path. Like, the path didn't exist for them to no. follow. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, there was literally a few, th- maybe, maybe a thousand movies. Probably not even that many worldwide that have been made at that time. There's literally thousands of movies made a year now yeah. worldwide. I mean, you can go on ID, IMDb and look up how many movies are made each year. And I, I bet you... It's probably worldwide, if you count just feature length films, thousands. Yeah. And at that time, like maybe a thousand total. So yeah. they didn't have much to go from. I mean, they're just, they're kind of, they're kind of making the wheel as they go. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I really liked it overall. Um, I thought, like you said, the acting was great. I liked a lot of the imagery I thought was really cool. I thought the music was great. I thought the directing was really, was really ingenious for what is available with sound. And the fact that they don't have any sound, that they have to... He's got to be very delicate with how he films each scene so you know what's going on. And obviously, like you said, you know. They do such a... He does such a great job scene to scene that you know what's going on. You don't have to... You don't have to look it up. You know what's happening. Um, So that's all I got. The other thing I was going to mention was... Because I texted John when I was looking... um, When I was looking for a copy of this movie, I was at Barnes & Noble... And I had remembered seeing it before, but I saw, I found a copy. There's a remake um, of Nosferatu in 1979, I believe it is, um, that is also critically acclaimed. It's, it was considered at the time, and it is now at a great, one of the greatest remakes ever made. 
Um, so I'd be interested in watching that. Definitely. That's By cool. well, and the director is uh, I think it's Werner Herzog, who's a pretty famous director. Um, but that's something I think I'm gonna have to check out now. And have you watched? Did I recommend The Witch to you? You did. Did you watch it yet? I've not watched it. Yet. Gotta watch The Witch. But the director, I just read this last night. The director of The Witch, which is honestly one of my favorite horror films of all time. Gotta check it out. Is doing a remake of Nosferatu. Really? Is writing and directing, and it's supposed to come out in the not soon I think in a couple of years I think they said like 2020 because he's also working on another project right now his second feature length film because The Witch was his directorial debut it was like his first I believe it was his first feature length film so he's got another project he's working on right now and then he's doing a remake that's confirmed already Nosferatu I'd love to see it so that'd be interesting I'd like to watch the 70s one I'd be interested to in see that so you glad you picked it? oh yeah Overall, good pick. It's definitely worth watching. Oh yeah, I'm glad you picked too. I gotta, I gotta watch some more silent films. Yeah, um, I'm telling you, Birth of a Nation. It's obviously it's fucked up, but well, I, I think it's worth a watch. Well, and he has another movie that's very famous too, uh, from that D.W. Griffith. I want to say it's like Deliverance or something. Deliverance. Not the, <laughs> not the action movie from what the '80s are, but it's something like that. It's one word. I can't remember what it's called. I have to go look it up. But he's got another really famous movie that came out not long after Birth of a Nation that's yeah. supposed to be. It's not over. I don't think there's. I don't think it's a KKK propaganda like Birth of a Nation was. <laughs> but I think I think there's some controversy in it, but not nearly what's around that. I think that would probably be a little less um, graining to watch in terms of its content. So yeah. that'd be just something to check out for sure. Um, so what I'd like to do, unless you got any other thoughts. To share on Nosferatu, I'm pretty good. I'm glad you recommended it. Thank you for recommending it. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have checked it out anytime soon. What I'd like to do at the end of each one of these episodes that go forward, I would like to try and recommend for anyone listening, uh, other than a movie we've watched, a theatrical release that's out now that you've seen as a recommendation, and then maybe something else you've seen recently. So I, if you got to think, one movie that I want to recommend that's currently out in theaters is Isle of Dogs. So I just saw Isle of Dogs on Sunday. Um, I loved it. If you like Wes Anderson, and if you like Fantastic Mr. Fox, his other stop motion he did, completely stop motion animation film, really, really good. Um, and then another film I just was able to watch today, it's on Amazon Prime, is, that came out this last year, is The Florida Project. So that that was lauded by a lot of people as one of the best movies made last year, so I was really curious to check it out. Was so, it? It was really good. Right. I I... Don't think I quite put it in my top ten for last year, but it's close. I loved it. Willem Dafoe is in it. Yeah. He plays. So the Florida Project is about. Um, it takes place right outside of Walt Disney World. The Florida Project. The name of the movie is actually a reference to the original title for Walt Disney World. So when it was in, when they were making it to keep it secret, they call it the Florida Project. So I was reading that's why they named this movie that. It's kind of ironic though. So it takes place in a like. One of those inns that people live in that a lot of shady stuff is going on. And it's about this this little girl and a couple of her friends that she hangs out with and her mom. Her mom is just... She's a pretty deplorable person, kind of a deadbeat. Uh, I don't want to tell you a whole lot, but basically it's kind of like trashy, poor America. And it just kind of... It's one of those movies that you watch. You don't feel like you're watching a movie. You feel like you're watching someone's life just... As they go about do these horrible things and these little kids doing going around seeing this horrible stuff, and Willem Dafoe plays the manager of the inn that all these people live at. It's excellent. Definitely recommend. Excellent. You have any movies you'd recommend that you've seen recently, uh, other than Avengers and Nosferatu? That I've seen recently. John. So if you don't know John, he's a very busy guy. So I don't know if he's had a lot of opportunity. He was telling me that he was trying to watch more movies as his schedule is freed up. I was. And I thought my schedule was going to free up after the season. Oh, you got it, busy. I've literally gotten busier. It's been insane. Um, none that come to mind. None. I mean, obviously I saw Black Panther. But that was probably the last movie I saw in theaters. Oh, before Infinity before War? Infinity War. And, I mean, it was good, but it wasn't as good as people I did up to be. <laughs> um, I guess I, I guess I'll say that the next movie that I'm really, really excited to see is, that's coming out in theaters, Deadpool 2. Yeah, that comes out a couple weeks. May 18th, I think. Coming pretty quick. I love the first Deadpool. I think everybody tell me how much you like Deadpool. Loved it. Loved it. I thought it was hilarious. It is hilarious. It's so funny. Yeah, and the marketing for this one's been pretty funny. Some yes. of the trailers have yeah. looked pretty good. I cannot wait. I look forward to seeing that. Um, 
but you definitely got to watch The Witch too. Dude, I really Cause I, do. I've been telling John some movies he's got to watch. Yeah, no, the Witch, <laughs> and, and actually, I, I really like movies that are actually. You said it was one of the scariest movies I've ever seen, right? I thought it was utterly disturbing. Like it, I was at the end of the movie, and it's so. And if you've never seen The Witch, it's not. So you hear the title, you're the witch, and you think it's gonna be some monster movie. The movie's really about. It takes place in Puritan America, so like 1600s Puritan family living in New England, and they get they they don't tell you why, but at the beginning of the movie, they get uh, ostracized from their town. They it's a mother, a father, and three kids, and a newborn baby. So I think four kids total, and they get ostracized from the town. And the beginning of the movie starts with them leaving, and they go to the edge of these woods. And there's like a clearing. That's where they build their home. They go to start a new life. And I won't really tell you the movie's intentions because I don't want to ruin anything. But what the movie really focuses on, and to me what's so disturbing, is it's really the psychological breakdown and destruction of this family who is very Christian, very Puritan, very religious. And you just watch this family fall apart. And to me it's so disturbing because that aspect of it seems so real. And at the time, that stuff happened. People for witchcraft or for uh, suspicion of witchcraft in Puritan America in the 1600s, people were killed and burned at the stake for stuff all the time. Because your neighbor wanted your house yeah. or your land or whatever. Yeah. yeah, and so they you know, they, they get lost accusing each other of certain things. And just see, that part of the movie seems so really disturbing. And it kind of devolves into some, another animal. I won't, I won't say anything, but... You said it was like, terrifying. I, it's disturbing. Disturbing, utterly what disturbing. What, what, what was the movie that you said was actually like? You, because I swear one of the movies you told me was like you, you were like it's the scariest movie I've ever seen. To, si- I wouldn't say Sinister is the scariest movie I've ever seen, but Sinister with Ethan Hawke gets under my skin. It's and part of it's the music. The score is one of the most like unnerving scores of a horror film I've ever heard, and it really is what kind of drives the movie along. But Sinister is is messed up. That's a messed up so, movie. So what's the scariest? I could give you an endless suggestion of good horror movies. Well, what's the scariest, like the number one scariest movie you have ever seen? I had trouble sleeping after Sinister. Sinister the Witch got under my skin too. I love horror movies and I love scary movies, but it like it takes a lot because I've seen so many at this point. You know, when I was a kid, if I watched a scary movie... Temple of Doom scared me when I was a kid. Indiana Jones, Temple oh, of real. Doom, the heart yeah. taking scenes. Oh, like when I was a kid, obviously, but I've seen so many movies and so many horror movies at this point. It takes so much to like truly get under my skin and just like unnerve me and like prevent me from sleeping or looking over my shoulder. But The Witch did that. It Follows didn't quite do it. Oh, The Babadook. The no. Uh, you didn't think so? The Australian no. The Babadook? That really got you? It was another one that got under my skin, man. Because it's not about the. That's another one. It's not about the creature. Yeah. It's about this mom losing her mind. Yeah. Oh, I don't. And I don't want to. We won't spoil any of those movies. So that's another time. Spoiler but that's one that also got under my skin. Yeah. I, I don't know. That one wasn't that scary to me. I remember I watched it right when it came out. I and I saw. I, I thought it was gonna be terrifying. And it, I don't. And I don't think it is in the traditional sense. Yeah. It's See, not I like. I, I like those scary movies. That to me, I don't. I don't think the witch is either. To me, I don't, I don't look like those monster movies and um, like Alien. Like I love Alien, the original Alien, but like that doesn't really scare me. You know, I, I enjoy it for what it is, but it doesn't like terrify me. What terrifies me is something that could really happen or is really terrifying, like like depression, loneliness, isolation, um, mental, like the destruction of your mental health, yeah. like. Uh, the the destruction of your family I don't know like that kind of stuff gets me more because I feel like that could actually happen I don't yeah. know no it's, that's that's for me because I've just seen I've seen it, so many it, movies that makes a lot more sense it really does but even it's a very rational way of yeah. looking it really is but in an irrational sense and maybe not because some people claim that things like this happen the last movie that literally kept me up at night paranormal activity paranormal activity when it first came out yes. and I went. I own so I own that movie. Yeah. I will not buy any of the sequels. Yeah. But to me, the original Paranormal Activity, the original Blair Witch Project too, yeah. were very effective. Extremely. Found footage films. Yes. No, I agree with you, they man. Really the like Paranormal that. Activity got under my skin because that's another one. Like, but think, but think about it. It's subtle because you don't. It's it's like it's like a slow burner, and the chaos doesn't happen till the end, and even then, you never really see. 
the ghost or the demon or anything like that. It's like the person. To me, people are more frightening. Yeah. Like the conjuring yeah. at the end. Spoiler for the conjuring at the end. <laughs> So if you haven't seen The Conjuring, plug your ears at the end when the mom gets possessed. Yeah. Like, to me, that's terrifying. Like, to me, like, the monsters and, and ghouls and demons and stuff, like, it can be scary or if it's handled right. But people, to me, are much more frightening. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know. That's, that's just the way I look at horror yeah, movies. I completely understand that. Yeah. But I don't know what it was about paranormal activity. It, man. I, I really, I convinced myself it, it, that it was real. I really did. It I did, man. I the did. original, I agree with you. I, I remember going to see it. Night. I remember going to see the original one. People in the theater were, dude, jumping so bad. I saw, you know who I saw that with? Connor McKinney, Kobe McKinney, and Bubba. If you guys are listening. And Bubba. And Bubba. It was the four of us went and saw the original Paranormal NCG. I remember that movie going experience because we went around Halloween time. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, that was out of the water. Well, um, we are at... We are an hour and five, almost an hour and five. So I'm gonna, is, unless you got anything else you want to add, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and end it. That's pretty good. I'm gonna end up, I'm gonna end up going through and having to cut some yeah, of this out because exactly. I feel like people aren't gonna listen to an hour worth of this. But I would love to think that of us that they would. Oh, maybe they it's will. Like, I don't know. Oh, um, if they would, then you know you have something. I, people will listen to you for then, an hour, and then we can talk something. for longer, add more topics. Like today, I'm gonna cut this out. But like today. Really all we talked about, you know, we had our in- an intro, we talked about Avengers, Nosferatu, and then we had a little film recommendation thing at the end. So really only three topics. I mean, I've, there's a couple of movie podcasts that I watch where they'll go in and, you know, they have a list of, they got timestamps and there's go up to two hours and they yeah. talk about five or six different things. But and you'll listen to it all the way through? I usually will. Sometimes I'll listen to them twice oh, really? because I feel like sometimes I don't catch something See, the first I mean, time. that's when you know you have something. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and end this. Thanks, John. Oh, we got a dog. That's okay. <laughs> Tucker's Tucker's joining the podcast. All right. Well, thanks, John, for joining me today. Hope to have you again soon. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And go see some good movies. See ya.